Welcome to Uncancelled Faith, a podcast that strives to break the culture of division, which so often segregates believers from one another. We're, We're your, your hosts, host, Joy Lucia Honeyball and Hannah Rose Russell. We're so excited to have you here today. This podcast is brought to you by Inspire Truth. Our mission at Uncancelled Faith is to create a space for people to share how the Lord is calling them to live, bringing a new perspective on subjects that so often become a topic of division. This is not a place for debate, but a time to share testimony, dive into some controversies, learn from one another, and discover how the Father wants to encourage us in our faith journeys. These episodes are recorded for the live Zoom audience. We also stream live on Facebook and YouTube, so be sure to subscribe to our channel for regular updates and the opportunity to join the Q&A at the end of each episode. Get ready, because Uncancelled Faith starts now. This week, we are so excited to introduce our guest, Samuel Perez, a former gay stripper who has dedicated his life to serving God after having a transforming encounter with Jesus that changed his life forever. Welcome to Uncancelled Faith. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. So as you guys can see, I'm working on trying to share this link to my own Facebook page because I want everybody to be able to see this um, live stream. And I think this whole thing is like amazing and cool because I had no idea that you could actually go live from Zoom. And I'm seeing this, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. This is super cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really neat. We enjoy doing it. I still have to figure out how to get it on more platforms at the same time because Zoom seems to only allow one at a time, but mm -hmm. that, that'll come soon. But yeah, we're just so excited to have you. And for those who aren't familiar with you, Sam, why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself um, and share a little about a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think um, well, my name is Samuel Perez, <laughs> and um, I am twenty twenty five now. <laughs> so that when you get older, you forget <laughs> as you age. I'm 25. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm like full time in ministry and I am um, uh, basically taking on all things LGBTQ plus and um, also uh, teaching people the Bible. I love the Bible. I love God's word. I'm a biblical literature student um, and I feel like I will always be that. <laughs> always learning the Bible. And and yeah, I'm basically a former gay stripper now turned child of God. And uh, I love to tell my testimony everywhere that I can and create content. And so that's a little bit about me. <laughs> that's awesome. So you've, you've had um, your platform and your kind of own ministry um, for, for a while now. Um, and you, um, you do a lot of online stuff, which is really great to see. We know you do um, TikToks. Um, and your target audience is really um, Gen Z. Would that be correct? Yeah, definitely, for sure. Um, I love uh, Generation Z, um, Millennial. So I'm actually on the cusp of uh, Generation Z and Millennial from 1996. And so um, I can really be weird and goofy and like strange like Generation Z, but I can also see like the millennial side of things um, because I kind of grew up like at a later time. And so it's cool to interact in between those generations and to be able to reach uh, both of those generations. Because on one side, it's like avocados and guacamole <clears throat> and like serious business, you know? And then on another side, it's like, let's deconstruct everything and just like, you know, Olivia Rodrigo and all these crazy stuff. And so um, it's interesting to be in the middle of that and to be able to minister to both types of um, audiences. Yeah, I That's love awesome. all your costumes and everything that you wear. I think it pulls in your audience so well. Um, and it definitely makes, um, makes a market for you to actually be heard and, and have the word of God be preached. Is that, is that why you like to dress, uh, like you dress up for your videos or do you just love to do it? <laughs> Um, the dressing up, it's actually funny because uh, being a part of um, being a part of social media, uh, obviously, I want to steward God's gifting well. And so he put me and he placed me in social media and he kind of gave me this platform. Um, I wasn't even asking for the platform. <laughs> I actually was trying to run away from the platform and um, and he gave me the, the platform. So I, I was like, I 
I'm going to try to steward this as best as I can and started watching a bunch of videos online to see, you know, how can I be successful in, in doing what I do and making sure that if God wants me to share my message, how can I share that effectively? And so um, I do a lot of experimenting. I do like crazy stuff like online. Um, I see trends that are happening online and I tend to uh, gravitate and try not to limit myself to a box. And so um, like, for example, I have an upcoming project where I, I wanna do a some more Christian like Bible reading. And then I have another project where I'm doing a horror themed um, uh, a podcast that brings people to Jesus, um, which is crazy. Like, and so I, I tend to do these experiments and see, oh, do people want to watch this? If people want to watch this, then sure, let's, you know, let's continue to do it. Because that's our, our whole point is to be able to spread our light onto as many people as we possibly can, um, obviously through the work of the Holy Spirit. And so the, the costuming came from that as well. It was obviously... I went to, uh, for, well, we'll get into that, I guess, in my testimony, but I went to um, um, school for theater in, in, in college. So that was the before Christ. <laughs> and the Lord has given me a set of skills and creativity to be able to um, not look like the regular pastor or the regular <laughs> preacher. And so I don't think he brought me through all that to just like, oh yeah, you're never going to use that ever again. Like, it's like, no, he wants me to use that. So started experimenting with the costumes and bringing a little bit of theta into, um, <laughs> into, into the Bible. And then there was a day, there was another day <laughs> where I was looking through my comments and someone's like, asked me, it's like, are you a theater kid? <laughs> I like, yes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, how'd you know? Like giving away the costumes. <laughs> so yeah, so that's kind of why I do the costumes and just to, you know, it's I do exegetical teaching and I do verse by verse teaching. And sometimes that can be a little bit boring and not exactly um like fun. <laughs> so the costumes help it to be a little bit more fun and give it that little bit of more entertaining. That's amazing. I, one thing I love about your uh, ministry is you, you're you always smiling and you bring a real sense of fun and great energy to whatever you're doing. So like you said, with Bible teaching, it can often be slow. Um, and the, I mean, the, the other stuff you talk about is, is really heavy stuff. It's, you know, it's controversial. It's things that um, a lot of Christians don't want to talk about or don't know how to talk mm -hmm. about or don't have like any kind of experience to to talk about LGBTQ stuff. So um, the fact that you do what you do and talk about the things you talk about, but yet bring this this fun and this energy to it and this creativity, I think is is just so great. Um, let's let's dive in. <laughs> let's yeah. dive into your testimony. Um, I know maybe some of some of our listeners have heard. Um, of you maybe some haven't um so you just have the most amazing story um do you want to do you want to tell us yeah for sure oh I tell my story so much I, I do this testimony like so often that I try to uh, pick parts that maybe um I haven't said before so let's see um so yeah I basically grew up Christian with my parents um they loved going to church uh, and um it, it was it was interesting growing up Christian because I knew the Bible, but I know I didn't know if I if I if I knew Jesus basically. I, I mean, it, it, since I was a little boy, I did love to um, sing to Jesus, and like I understood who God was because of my parents, and I used to always like I love to sing to God. I still do love to sing to God, and um, and so I was like a little boy singing. Um, let the light come in by um, Marcos Wee, which was um, Enciendo Una Luz. It's like a Spanish song. And I grew up in Miami, Florida, um, a, a, a family of basically like immigrants that had come from Cuba, from Venezuela to, um, to Miami. And um, yeah, it was cool. You know, we grew up very poor. Um, so we didn't have a lot of activities to do besides church. <laughs> and and um, moving on into basically like, middle school I knew I was different than most of the guys that were around me and um I was creative and I loved to like do arts and all that kind of jazz and so um, going into middle school I realized that um I wasn't really attracted to girls in the way that the other boys were attracted or I would say lusting after the girls 
And I was like, oh, you know, maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't, I don't like what those other boys like. And I definitely don't see girls in the way that they see them. And so um, I ended up getting a best friend and I ended up like having feelings for him or catching feelings for him. And I remember asking myself in the shower when I was a little boy, like, why, um, why, why do I have these feelings? You know, am I gay? Do I like men? And that was kind of the first time that I ever started thinking about, oh, like maybe I might be gay. Um, because my whole life, basically I had been bullied and people had told me that, um, that I was feminine and um, still bullied today through online. <laughs> Don't you just love social media? Oh, and it's so, amazing. <laughs> I know, right? And so I'm like, um, I was bullied like heavily and, um, and yeah, and so I, I was like, okay, well maybe what people say about me is true. Maybe I am gay and maybe I do uh, like this guy who was my best friend at the time. So he ended up like not liking me and it's like a whole story and you can watch that whole thing on my YouTube channel because my, my testimony is like super long. <laughs> and so I won't get into the details, but I ended up moving uh, from middle school into high school. And that's when I was homeschooled and I became like a little nerd and just started messing around with computers and video editing and, you know, Photoshop and all that stuff. Oh, I shouldn't say nerd because nerd are, nerds are like smart. I'm, I was like a dork, right? Because the dorks are ones, the ones that are not smart. And so, so I didn't learn anything in high school. I can tell you that. And, um, and then, yeah, and then I started going to a theater school. Um, I got accepted to this amazing conservatory program in Miami. And it was awesome. I went there and I was kind of just finding trying to find happiness wherever I could go. Um, I came out of the closet to my parents in middle school and they sent me to um, like Exodus, which was a um, like conversion camp. <laughs> they made a whole movie about it on Netflix. And <clears throat> yeah, I didn't really want to go, but I did want to be helped. And so that's what I did and ended up um, just choosing that, you know, I would, I would, I, I wanted to have a relationship with Jesus and I was always like thinking about Jesus all the time, but I didn't know how I could. And I'm not a hypocritical person. I don't like to lie. I like to, I like to be truthful. And so I was like, well, I love Jesus, but at the same time, I love myself and I want to do something for me. And so um, it, it was like a divided love, I would say. I get to, um, to theater college and uh, trying to find happiness. And there I was like, oh, I can finally be gay. I can finally like meet other guys my age and go out and have experiences I was a virgin and so I was like I was like I want to get crazy in college and I want to meet like my my the love of my life and I had all these conceptions and ideas about like um love <laughs> and so I ended up uh leaving um a, a, a college after two years because it just didn't make me happy like acting didn't really necessarily fulfill me in the ways that I thought it was going to fulfill me and so if there's anybody out there like watching my videos and like, they're like, oh, he's doing all that because like he loves acting and film. I was like, no, and like I was so unpassionate about it after just two years. <laughs> so I was like trying to chase my passion. I was trying to change something that like I really loved um, to do and something that really made me happy. And so I um, ended up becoming a personal trainer when I became a personal trainer. Oh, and by the way, I met no gay people in college. <laughs> that was the only like gay one in my class, basically. And there was another guy, but I was not attracted to him whatsoever. And so um, I ended up um, going into personal training and I had downloaded Grindr. And so I was looking for love in the wrong areas. And I didn't know any better because I was an innocent little kid. And um, no one had ever taught me, you know, how to be gay or how to date men, you know, like that's not like a thing. So I was just trying to figure it out day by day by myself and being taken advantage of and like abused and it was horrible. So, um, but there were some good experiences. I mean, I can't label everything as horrible. And um, I ended up becoming a personal trainer, moved to New York City. When I moved to New York City, I thought like, this is where I can finally be queer and out and like do whatever I want to do. And like, you know, meet new people because it was very hard for me to make relationships here in Miami. I just feel like in general, this might come back to bite me in the butt, but <laughs> I I feel like the people in Miami are like very shallow and like they don't really have like goals and they don't have like, I, I don't know if you guys have ever been here, but it's it's very much like a vacation yeah. city and like city it is city. spring break. <laughs> yeah. And it's like that all the time. And like, it doesn't change. So like when I moved to New York, I met a whole different type of people, you know, people with that ambition, people wanted to do something that just like get married and have kids and then like 
never do anything with their lives. Like people who wanted to touch the ceiling, you know, that will touch the sky with their ambition or whatever. And so break the glass ceiling, I would say. And so um, went to New York and I went completely by myself and I was um, uh, like alone, basically. There was no family members there. Like I didn't know a single soul. Like I was crazy moving, the, moving up there. <laughs> And when I got there, I ended up, um, I ended up uh, starting to work at a gym and I started training a drag client. She was like a drag queen and uh, he was a drag queen. And so um, I told him that I was having difficulty making friendships and relationships. And he said, oh, you should be a stripper because like you'll meet a lot of people doing that. And I'm the type of person is that like, I think time is really valuable and I love working. I'm a workaholic, always have been. And so I was like, I'm not really one to go out to clubs and drink and do drugs and all that stuff. And so I was like, it'd be awesome if I went to clubs and got paid for it. And so I was like, <laughs> well, I'm, I want to do stripping. Like, that'd be super cool. Like, I'll go have fun. Like, if I were to just go to the club, but get paid. So I um, ended up doing that and it, diving myself into the stripping world. And you guys can ask me questions about that later if you want. Um, but it ended up just not making me happy either. And um, people were, they were knowing me more for my stage name as opposed to me. And so I had created like this persona and, mm -hmm. um, and people didn't know who the real Sam was. And so that kind of made me a little bit sad and only my close friends did. Um, but I didn't end up, end up meeting people, but the people that I did meet it was not good because that type of environment, it's not a good environment. And so, yeah, um, ended up uh, leaving New York City and getting a job upon, um, after eight months, I left New York City because it was just like toxic for me and for my mind. And um, I was upset about that too, because I was like, man, I moved all this way and like, it didn't work out. <laughs> I had so much plans. And so went to Australia because I got a job on a cruise ship and I started working on the cruise ship, becoming a host and just like talking and uh, doing bingo and <laughs> dancing. It was like weird. It was a weird experience and a weird time. <laughs> And, um, but it was awesome because it was like this job that everybody's super jealous of. Like you get to go to islands all the time and like travel and see the world. And I got to see Fiji and like um, New Caledonia and, you know, parts of, um, of French islands. And it was just really beautiful. The most beautiful beaches I've ever seen in my life. And, um, but I was still very unhappy and still very depressed. And um, there was no gay guys on the ship. There was only like one, once again, the other ones were taken. And I was like, <laughs> I was like a love addict I guess or a lust addict I was like oh my gosh like I'm on this boat all alone there's no one who I could like talk to no grinder no tinder no nothing like not even like any pornography either because like I mean I was in the world and I was like oh my gosh like what the heck like I'm in the middle of the ocean like there's no internet nothing and so nowhere to feed my lust and um and so I went to I went back home after three months of my contract. I think it was two months. Actually, I'm giving myself a little bit too much credit. <laughs> two months of my contract. It was supposed to be six months and I didn't complete it and ended up quitting and I left and I went back to America and um, got home and just was super depressed and super um, lonely. And I just felt like a failure, honestly. I felt like I had accomplished so much but like failed in every aspect, like New York City, that was a failure. And my personal training career, that was a failure. Um, the, the job and the cruise ship, that was also a failure. And so, and my relationships and my interpersonal relationships were failures. And um, the devil just really hit me because I've struggled with depression ever since middle school. And ever since, like, it's funny how like my depression came exactly like, um, which I never really thought about this. So was, I guess this is a new concept to my testimony is, um, my depression like started happening to me when I got into middle school. Like that's when like my feelings like started to like really take a hold of my life as they never did before. Like before middle school, I can't even remember like if I had feelings. Like it's so weird. Like I don't I don't know if other people are like this, but to me like I never felt the Im immense amount of emotion and feelings until I kind of like started um, letting the devil have a doorway into my life, which was weird. Um, and so I never had depression up until like I faced rejection from that guy. And that was because I ended up like giving into my homosexual desires. Um, and so instead of maybe just like pushing it away or just being like, God will take care of that or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, open that door. And so I had depression pretty much my whole life since then. 
And, um, and then I had depression that night when I got back home from, um, to America after trying to like start my life over in Miami and just being with my parents, my parents' house. Um, I ended up, um, basically, uh, like telling God, like, I, I was like, God, if you're real. And the whole time I had a relationship with Jesus, I was going to church and, you know, going to places like Hillsong and stuff, but I just didn't, I couldn't get close. Cause it was like, there's always that thing preventing me, like homosexuality preventing me um, from getting close to God. I was like, God can't love me if I like I'm doing this and all this stuff. And, and so I would just pray to God, keep me safe and, and never stop praying to God. And uh, that night I just, prayed and I told him you know God if you're real then I need you to prove it to me because like tomorrow I just feel like I don't want to live life anymore like I, I want to just be suicidal <laughs> it's like pretty dark but I was like I don't want to see what tomorrow brings like I just think it's so pointless like I've pretty much done everything that I wanted to do like seen the entire world and like I'd like met so many people at this point like hundreds of people from all over the world like I was like what could tomorrow bring me that I could be excited about like there's nothing like I could possibly be excited about and so I was like, I'm just going to kill myself. Like, it's like literally not even worth it. Like, I'm just going to be in pain and depressed. And so um, I told God, I was like, this is your chance to prove yourself to be real because I'm going to just die. So, <laughs> and then I did something right, which was interesting. I remember that uh, my mom used to tell me all the time that there is not just um, the physical world that we live in, but the spiritual world. And God sometimes wants to give us a message, but he can't because we're like prohibiting him from doing so. And so, and yes, we have that type of power where we could push away God. And so um, we create walls with our sin. That's literally what sin is, <laughs> disobedience towards God. And so um, I got my phone and I put Spotify on and um, I created an environment for God to just speak to me. And I, I put Christian music on and put a playlist and it just was like a random Spotify playlist. I didn't have Christian music on my phone. And um and I fell asleep to it. And then the next morning I woke up and I felt like all of my depression had been lifted away from my body. And I took that like as a sign from God that God was real. And um, that doesn't usually happen. If you have depression, um, you know that it does carry on into the next day. And, um, and so, yeah, I kneeled down and I just told the Lord, I was like, this is a miracle. And I don't know who you are, God. I'm intending on finding out who you are. Cause I don't just want to say it's like, oh, it's okay, it's Jesus. You know, I did call out to Jesus, but I was like, what if it's Muhammad? You know, like what if it's Buddha? <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna find out who you are, but this is my life and I want to give it to you. And I want to surrender my life to you, God. And um I want to wholeheart wholeheartedly do that for you. And so um that was the moment when I did that. And then that began my Christian journey, which led me on my second part of my testimony, which is just, if not even more intense, I was listening to a, a woman preacher um, by the name of uh, Dr. Melissa Scott. And I really, really love her. Um, she's an incredible teacher. She knows like 20 languages. It's insane. She's in California, but she was like talking about how like, she doesn't really believe in testimonies like before Christ. And she's like, she's like, we never do testimonies and stuff like that. That's just like her personal opinion. But um, she says, because like, really the sanctification process is like the most important process. That's what we should be talking about. It's like not coming to Christ. Cause that's like the easy time, you know, like, oh, God just being God and saving us from our sin. Like that's super easy for God. But the real challenge is like sticking with God and that sanctification um, challenge. And so that led me to like my four years that I've been in ministry um, today. And so yeah. I think that's so true. We focus on, okay, how did you come to, to meet your savior? And then it kind of just ends there. It's like, okay, that's my testimony. And it's like, no, like I always have this thing. Um, you know, when you watch sermons and everything and you, at the end, the pastor says, if anyone would like to come and receive Christ as their savior, like come to the front or say this prayer and da, 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 da. And they're like, okay. And then that's it. You're saved. And it's like, but no, there's so much more. That's like not even, that's just, that's just the top bit. That's the, that's the like tipping your, uh, dipping your toe in the doorway. You're yeah. not fully in until you, you go through all of this stuff. And I absolutely loved what you said. We create walls with our sin and mm -hmm. how, and how you notice like all you open the door to the devil and all of a sudden you're getting these depressed, like you're getting depression. You're having these suicidal thoughts. You're um, lusting after all of these men and different things like that. And it's just, it's so true. And none of us really see it. 
because yeah, like you said, as, as kids, we've got these innocent minds. And then when they become warped by the world and different things, then we start thinking, I mean, I surely did. I, I grew up in a very Christian household. Um, I was sheltered. So I couldn't like watch different things and, and all of that, but then I would go uh, to different schools and that would influence me. I mean, I remember saying my first swear word when I got mad and I was like, oh my goodness, what have I done? Like all this stuff, but it was just like how you get fed it every day. And then it just comes out of you at the same, like um, as, it's, as it's being fed, if we don't counter it and have, and have that foundation in God. Um, I, I do kind of want to hear um, before like before we go into the meat of of your of your ministry now and your journey now of when you were stripping when you were um doing the the um oh my gosh I've just like blanked on the word like do on uh, the gym the bodybuilding and all of that stuff um and the personal training personal training that's the word yeah <laughs> as you were doing all of that what was what was it that you were, what you were craving? And then what were you experiencing in that place? Like when you were doing those things, like when you're on stage performing for people, um, in the clubs, what, like, was there anything going through your mind at that time? Or were you like, like what, even was there a time where you were calling out saying, okay, what, what is here for me right now? Yeah. I mean, I think what I really wanted was to meet people. And, Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I, it was New York, is expensive. <laughs> and so I had to pay rent and um, meet people, make money. That would be nice. So I could not die of starvation. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, but I think what was going through my head the whole time was just like, well, you know, I'm kind of like into performance. That's what I do. I'm an entertainer. And so mm-hmm. at my core, that's what I was taught in theater school is like how to entertain. So I was like, I didn't have the best body out of everybody there. Um, I didn't have the best looks out of everybody there. Um, but I definitely did know how to put on a show. (laughs) And so I had been like taught how to do that in theater school, you know, like get, get people to have eyes on me basically. And so, which is amazing now because I use that for God now. Mm -hmm. I was like, and that's why people watch my podcast is like, wow, it's entertaining. Like, even though you're just sitting there talking, like it's entertaining. Yeah. Cause the Lord like uses everything for good. And that's amazing. I love him. And so, um, yeah, I think what was going on through my head was just like, okay, I want to meet people, maybe even find someone like to fall in love with in that environment, which is stupid and like very <laughs> Cinderella of me and very fairy tale. I was like, I'm going to find my Prince Charming in like, the middle of the club. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, and I also just wanted to feel seen, wanted to feel um, like uh, um, accepted. And so um, it was a part of like that, like understanding um, in Miami, I never felt seen. I never felt like accepted. And, and so in New York, it was kind of my opportunity where I could be like, I'm here and like, see me and like, I'm a person and I have feelings. And cause there's a lot of like, a lot of what is the root of like homosexuality and um, same sex attraction is um, really your perception of what people think about you and your value. And so um, getting down to the core of everything is just like, it really just comes down to value. Like, do you value yourself or are you trying to find your value Mm -hmm. in other people? And so um, people who are obsessed with relationships, not just homosexuality, but also heterosexuality, it's like, it's because they don't value themselves. Like, so they need somebody else to tell them that they're valuable. But when you value, um, when you see your value in Christ, you realize, oh, there's nothing anybody could ever tell me. Like Jesus values me so much more than anyone Um, I don't need a validation through relationship. I don't need a validation through marriage or any of those things. So, so yeah, I'm definitely Mm -hmm. feeling like valuelessness in that environment and wanting to be seen and, um, and heard and just known. Did I break up? (laughs) No, no, you're here. (laughs) You didn't. Um, you talk a lot about um, how um, I was just trying to think of the, the correct way to phrase this. Um, so you came away from the homosexual lifestyle um, to Jesus, and now you have your ministry. Um, and you talk a lot about um, denying your flesh, saying no to those temptations, and instead 
you know, falling in love with Jesus. Um, a lot of people in the LGBTQ community, and this is highlighted in Netflix's recent documentary, Pray Away, um, would say that you can become an ex-gay, that that is your identity, and it's very, like, identity-based. Um, so how kind of what is what is your stance on that and how do you um kind of um convey your message through um your ministry um and how do you bring together like the church and then you know the lgbt community uh well the lord really called me into ministry when um i was just getting started with him like very early on and it was weird the way that he did it because he knew if he, if he tried to like put me in ministry, like I would have, no, <laughs> I would have been like, absolutely not. I do not like people that much. <laughs> I was like, I do not want to be dealing with people for the rest of my life. Like, uh, I'm like, I'm good, God. I would have been like Jonah. I would have just like thrown off, throw myself off like a boat into like sea serpent's mouth or something. And so um, the Lord like leaded me into ministry and really his end goal and his plan was to help like, wanting for me to educate the church but also wanting me to help be there for people who have same-sex attraction and that's a really hard job (laughs) because people who have same-sex attraction um they are beautiful and wonderful but we also have a lot of issues like it's a lot of things and it's mostly because of society it's mostly because of the way that we've been treated you know it's like we legit are victims um, but in Christ, we're not victims. And so it's, it's helping that victim mentality, um, and, and seeing yourself as an overcomer instead. And so that documentary, like, um, in my ministry, um, my goal in ministry is not to help people change their sexuality that I'm, I'm not into, um, what is that called? A uh, reparative therapy, um, not into conversion, like camps, any of that stuff. I still have same-sex attraction. I'm still dealing with it in a healthy way with God. And if God wanted to remove it, he could, and he would. And so um, that's not impossible for him. And I wholeheartedly believe that, but it's still around, which means he still wants me to have it like a thorn in my flesh. And he still wants me to obey him despite my sufferings and despite the things that I'm going through. Sometimes we feel like um, it's, it's like, oh, God just wants to deliver us of everything. God just wants us to live a beautiful life all the time. It's like, no, like Jesus learned obedience through suffering. And sometimes we're going to have to suffer. And that's like the whole point. Exactly. It's not because he, he wants us to suffer, but it's because we live in this world and we live in sin and there's only so much that he can do. And he also wants to um, exemplify our character. Character is very important to God. And of course, no one gets anything that's worth doing like uh, just easy. You know, like it, it's like if something is worth doing, it's going to be very difficult to do. And like having it's going to be very difficult to get. So, um, yeah, uh, my main goal is not to change people's attractions. Um, uh, I mean, it is sort of because but not to like <laughs> women <laughs> to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's my main goal. The main goal has always been Jesus. I will always be Jesus to so fall completely in love with him. And so I don't like the term um, ex-gay. I don't like using that term. But if I have to make a YouTube video and a TikTok video, what do you think describes me the best? (laughs) An ex-gay. So like I have to use it. You know, it's like if I put anything else, the title is going to be too long. And if you work in social media, you know that it's like people only have like an intention span of like an ant. So like (laughs) you have to be very careful with what the words that you use or people just lose interest. And so the best way for me to achieve my message is to label myself as what the world labels me. And I don't have a problem doing that because I'm not offended with this world and what the world has to say about me. So once people do listen to my message, they understand, oh, like ex gay is just trying to say that he's left behind the homosexual lifestyle. Um, And that just means that I no longer am interested in what that has to offer for me. Um, That doesn't mean that I'm not tempted by that. It doesn't mean that I don't have same sex attraction. It just means that that's not my goal like it used to be. My goal used to be, I want to get married and this is a part of my identity. Um, I want to get married to a man and be with a man. But now my goal is not 
Um, I want a man, I, don't, I want a marriage, I want a relationship, and this is my entire identity, my goal, and my identity is in Jesus Christ, and so that is my identity, like, when people tell me, like, do you do anything other than, like, talk about Jesus all the time, I'm like, no, not really, <laughs> like, because, like, he's, like, my entire identity, like, I'm, like, you might find that really boring and basic, but, like, I'm literally just in him, like, that there's nothing about me that is, like, I don't I don't know how to describe like there's nothing about me that is myself like it's like it's all comes from him he's amazing and so um I'm proud to be in Christ and proud to put my identity in him and and yeah and so that's what I try to teach to other people is that is it's not um so much change of attractions towards women but it is change of attractions towards Jesus and that's the real goal of my ministry and it is possible because I'm standing here before you today and and I'm very honest and transparent about what I'm going through. So I never said that I that I don't have same sex attractions or that I'm trying to do that. But um, it is possible to leave behind and to have a change of heart because I would have never thought that in my life that I would ever not want to be in a marriage, not want to be in a relationship. That was like my goal since I was a little boy watching Titanic. Like <laughs> I love Titanic and Rose dying, and it was so romantic that I was like obsessed with that idea you know, obsessed with the idea of like someone dying for me. Um, and then I did find someone who died for me and that's Jesus. So um, I found my love after all. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Like I never, like you never really picture it like that, but it's so true. And, and it, I, my, Joy and I just finished watching Pray Away and there was something that it, they did say on it, um, which is about how the Christian lifestyle is all about getting married and having kids and yes there is the commandment in the bible to like to be fruitful and multiply but there also says in the new testament like like look no everyone is made to like have a spouse and to get married and to have kids and so i think it's so true of what you were saying like this whole time you're you're growing up you're like right i want to get married i want to have kids this is the this is what identity should be. I think this, I mean, we've always had an identity crisis going on, but I feel that it's happening more and more right now because of the push that is coming from the LGBT um, agenda. I would say, I'm not going to like put everyone that, that um, identifies as that completely under it, but this thing that you're seeing now in Hollywood where every show um, has, has some representation or now it's in the schools and different things. And I kind of want to hear your thoughts on, um, the rising declaration that it's, that it, that it's growing the influence of it and, and teaching this identity when it's just bringing more crisis into kids, into teens and, and up. Yeah. I mean, you know what? It's so funny. If the agenda is just to be treated like a normal human being and to be treated equally like everybody else, then I say, yes, that is a beautiful agenda. And I would stand with the LGBTQ agenda because it's like you guys, I mean, here in America, it's like, oh, you know, like RuPaul's Drag Race is everywhere. And like, uh, I hate gay people, you know, they're like, whatever. It's like, yeah, literally gay people are dying in other parts of the country just for expressing what's going on inside of them. And so I'm very much for like people not dying and being treated equally. And so most people, they don't see that part of the agenda. They just think, oh, they're coming for my kids. You know, they're trying to make everybody gay. And it's like, no, we're, they're just trying to make an environment where they can express themselves without dying, you know? And that's what sometimes we forget as Christians that, you know, we live in Jesus. And so sometimes to us, the things of the natural seem very foolish, um, but we have to place ourselves in our, in, in our, in, in their footsteps, you know, in their shoes um, and try to see things from a different perspective because um, like the whole reason why the LGBTQ is so strong and like coming out and, you know, uh, things like um, uh, Stonewall happening and the revolts and, and all that and the parades, they're for a reason. It's because people have been oppressed. People have been abused. People have not been able to be themselves. They've not been able to um, express themselves for a very long time. And so now finally, we have an opportunity where people are like, we don't just want to fight for our own expression, but we want to fight for the expression of those who don't have voices, the ones who are being killed in different parts of the world. And so um, if you're okay with people being killed for being honest, then okay, you're an amazing Christian. (laughs) But I'm not okay with that. And so I think I'm for, you know, just being honest and letting the world just take its course because honesty, um, it comes 
if you're honest with yourself, like you're able to um, open yourself up to truth. And, and if you're transparent, you're able to open yourself up to truth instead of being like, oh, I'm just going to shun this part of myself. I'm never going to let anybody know what's going on. Because if I do let somebody know what's going on, they'll either kill me or shun me or just, you know, uh, demonize me or something. And so, sorry, that was like a text message from my computer. I don't know if you guys heard that. <laughs> was like no, didn't. Oh, okay. It's in my headphones. Then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's, I think that's where I place myself. It's like, it's not this evil agenda that's trying to come for your kids. Like, yes, are they doing everything perfectly in that agenda? Absolutely not. Maybe not the best, but really look at, look down at what it's coming from. Like, why are they doing it? It's because voice for the voiceless, you know, the people who for a long time have not been able to speak, have not been able to talk about what's going on with them without the LGBTQ and their parades and their pride and all those different things, I wouldn't even be able to come on here and talk on this podcast about the things that I'm feeling because probably the Christians would have killed me by now. <laughs> like I would not have like rights as an individual and as a person, they would have killed me. Like they would have been like, burn him at the stake, just like right. they did with women, you know, in the 19, uh, forties or twenties or whatever. I don't know. Or maybe the 1800s. <laughs> yeah. They weren't burning women in the 20s, <laughs> but it's like that, you know, it's like, it's progress, but at the same time, it's, we know it's not the best progress, but it is at the same time because God can use everything for good. And so um, that's kind of my stance on it. It's like, it's not good, but at the same time, it's like, I try to see people's perspective and I try to um, acknowledge what's really going on there and, and how people are starting finally to feel comfortable in expressing themselves and be whoever they feel like they're, they are. And, you know, and then that's when we come in, we're like, okay, that's your truth. That's so <laughs> awesome. Let me show you my truth. And if you like that, sure, you know, and if not, then we can all get along and, you know, uh, like Jesus called me to love. So I'm going to love you dis despite if you accept my truth or not. And so, yeah, I think sometimes we want to be on the front end of things. And we have been in America um, when America was it started as a, as a country, we had revivals and it was Christian, you know, the declaration of independence, everything is like in God we trust. Right. So we've been on the forefront of that at all times, but now maybe it's time for us to take a back step not be on the forefront, not making all the decisions and letting the world just really be the world. And so, and really get a lot more done behind the scenes than we could ever in the front of the scenes, trying to control and manipulate things for our own um, uh, a moral code, which the world doesn't share. So I would love for the world to be perfect and lovely and there'd be no abortions and no sin and all these things, but it's just not gonna happen. And I'm not justice and Jesus needs to come back. And so um, if I try to Im Im put that, just, uh, that justice and moral code upon this world, I'm doing all that without the kingship of Jesus here. And so Jesus never told us to do that. He told us just to cry out to him, um, to understand that we would need saving. And then that's when he would come, when every single person of all nations would hear about Jesus, that's when he would come and we would cry out to him. And so that's the most important, not trying to change the world. He's going to change the world at us. <laughs> that's his job. Like he's going to be king. He's going to be justice and he's going to separate the lamb and the sheep. That's all his job, not my job. Um, let the world be the world. I'll take a back step. I'll influence people from behind the scenes. And, um, and yeah, and that's kind of my answer. So what do you think Christians, how, how do you think they should be reacting right now and ministering to the lgbt community especially um as well to um kids and different ones who who the message that the world is giving is love who you love embrace it and it's like embracing the sin so how how are we to respond then so that i i mean i'm reading right now Caleb um, Kaltenbach, I might have messed up his name. He's got an incredible book uh, that just came out called Messy Truth about how we respond without, um, without like um, going against our beliefs and things. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that and how we should be responding as Christians to what is happening and how the world is always about embracing this, uh, the sin rather than repenting and turning to Yeshua. Yeah. So um, we can all take a note from the underground church, especially the one in <laughs> Afghanistan right now. Um, I, I have heard um, from the underground church that it's really interesting. Um, a lot of people in Afghanistan, um, they were given the choice um, to actually leave, like the underground church <laughs> leaders. And a lot of the underground church leaders said, no, 
we're not going to leave. And they thought, what do you mean? What do you mean you're not going to leave? Like, you're going to die. Like, they're going to kill you. Like, if they find out, like, who you are and what, what you're doing. And they're like, yeah, but the whole point is to spread Jesus. Like, if we're not here, how will they know? How will they know hmm. about Jesus? And they're willing to put their lives on the line just to tell people about Jesus. And so sometimes we forget that. It's just like, we want to have this perfect little comfortable environment where we're comfortable and happy and living our lives. And it's like, no, you're not supposed to be comfortable and you're not supposed to be happy. It's supposed to be excruciating pain. And you're <laughs> supposed to be telling people like about Jesus and in the best, most amazing way you can possibly think of without getting caught and without a, like, a, like someone exposing you because you're going to die. So mm -hmm. we can take a note from the underground church in that way, how to respond to that, like to be in the world, but not a part of the world. And so I don't have to be the world. <laughs> like, I don't have to like try to, that's something that I just, I really hated about Christians when I came um, to Christ. It was like, they just, it seems like they just want to input a moral code upon like our lives. And it's mm -hmm. like, guys like that's not gonna work like hello like we need Jesus you know like it, no, matter, no matter how many abortions you stop no matter how many gay marriages you stop like no matter what sin you try to stop like this world is not getting any better <laughs> like it's not gonna get better unless Jesus comes back or we put Jesus in the middle of that and so don't try to make things right without Jesus we have to make things right with Jesus and so and ask him what he wants and what does Jesus want? Jesus wanted us to love, essentially, to, to bring light and to spread light because the light of all men is the life that is inside of us. And so when we literally love people, we bring life into them. And so how do I respond to people who are having, um, who have gay kids or, or maybe if I have a, a relationship and someone came out to me and they're like, I'm, you know, come to my gay marriage or all these things that I would respond with love. So what does that look like? The, the, um, what is described in first Corinthians it's you know long suffering patience kindness all these different things it does not have its own way sometimes we forget that love does not have its own way like what does that mean that it doesn't have its own way <laughs> so it doesn't matter what I think it's it that's not how love works and so that's not what God God knows truth he knows holiness Yet he still, despite all that, he still decided to create an entire group of people that would never accept him. And you might think to yourself, that's, an, that's, that's an ungodly. How could God do that? Knowing very well that God, that these people would never accept him. Why would he create them? Because God doesn't have his own way. He's like, I know they're never going to accept me, but I'm still going to give them the chance to accept me. And I'm still going to love them through that because I don't have my own way. And if they still don't want to choose me, then that's on them. But doesn't he know? Of course he knows. But that's the beautiful thing about love is that it's patient and it's kind and it's always forgiving and it's merciful and it's faithful. And so all those things, those are the, that's what I would like to bring to relationships. Um, to stand on my truth. What does that person care about my truth if he doesn't know Jesus? They don't. They don't care about my truth. You know what they do care about is if I love them if I show them that I care about them, if I'm willing to give up my life for them, just like the underground leaders in Afghanistan, they're willing to stay in that horrific environment. Why? So that they can show love to people, which will ultimately bring them to Christ. And so when you show love, someone's going to ask you, why do you love me so much? And you can tell them, it's not me who's loving you. It's Jesus who's loving me. And I'm just bringing that love to you because I, we, we don't have love. God is a source of love. He is, he is love. And so um, that would be my response to just people just, can we just do what Jesus asked us to do, which is to love people and to be there for people and to, you know, exhibit what first, first Corinthians chapter 13 says, um, or do we need to have our way all the time? <laughs> so just on that, um, I completely agree with you, um, but I know a few friends um, personally who um, are in the LGBT community and they've been personally hurt by the church or, or Christians or, or things like that. Um, what is, how do you have good relationships with um, friends of yours who are in the LGBT community who who are maybe consider themselves Christians but aren't um you know giving up their 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 flesh in order to you know surrendering everything to Jesus how how would you communicate with them 
how would you, um, yeah, help, help them? The same way that I would help anybody, <laughs> the same way, like they're no different, you know, the same way that I would help someone who comes into my job. I don't know, like uh, same, same way, same way I would show love to anybody is the same way that I would do that, you know, be completely dependent on the spirit. Sometimes I think we forget the role of the spirit and we don't magnify the spirit. It's just like, we want a set of rules. We want laws, basically, as we know, laws don't work. <laughs> old covenant, old Testament, the, the, what is it called? Um, I forget the, the rabbis literally wrote an entire commentary on the book of, um, uh, on the laws that Moses gave, right? This is the, the Mishnah, if I'm not mistaken. They wrote, yeah, they, uh, they did the, um, oh my gosh, I just blanked on it, but they've got the, um, their list of rules as well that they added, um, to the law that they've now created as part of it, uh, the Talmud, that's it. Talmud, there we go. Yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> speak Hebrew. Moment. Yeah, I don't speak Hebrew. So sometimes I forget the words, but the Talmud like is like rules upon rules because the first rules weren't enough. So we need another rules. So I had to approach this situation. I had to approach this situation. There are no rules. It's led by the spirit. It's being completely dependent upon God. And when you're completely dependent on God and someone comes up to you is like, oh, I want to hang out with you. Like the other day I got invited um, by an amazing couple in, in my gym and they're both gay. And they were like, let's go to this gay city and let's go to this gay club. And I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, this is the first time that they invite me out. I obviously want to minister to them. I want to show them love. I want to show them who I am as a person. I'm interested in a friendship with them. Right. Like we all should be with everybody to show them Jesus and, and just our natural human interactions. And but now they want to go to a gay club. And I don't know if I want to go to a gay club. Like, I don't want to be seen at a gay club. I don't want to do that. And there's nothing for me there. And I wouldn't like it personally, but I know that I have a mission and a responsibility for what God wants me to do. And so instead of staying home and, you know, or maybe going to a Friday church service, I'm going to go to the gay club with these two gay couple, well, one gay couple. And so um, these two gay guys. And so I head over to Manor, which is like the, the, the gay city here in Miami and um, at first I didn't even know we were going into the club. Like I thought we were gonna be around the club cause they got like shops and like uh, stores to eat and stuff. And I just wanted to sit down and have a conversation with them just talk to them about my life and get to know them. And then they're like, no, we're going in the club. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, all right. I was like, let's go to the club. So I go in the club and I'm there and they're dancing and I'm like dancing a little bit too. And then, and then I'm like, oh guys, can we leave? You know, like, can we go? I just really want to talk to you guys. Like, can we just like sit down and like have like a pizza or something? They're like, oh yeah, you know, one more hour in the club. So we spend one more hour. So once again, it's just patience and like ex 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 exhibiting that. It's like not having my own way. And then, and, and my whole time, the whole time I'm there in the club is not, oh, I'm not strong enough to face this, or I'm not, I'm thinking about this man, or I'm thinking about that, or I'm seeing this, it's like, no, my whole time, I'm, I'm on mission, I'm on purpose, I'm on Jesus Christ, and so, um, and I'm there to show them who I am, I want them to know who I am, and I want to know who they are, and so we finally leave the club, and then we go, and we sit down um, at a pizza place, and uh, I'm sorry, no, it is like a, a cafe, and then finally, I was like, oh, it's four in the morning, I can finally just sit down, and like, talk to them and just show them the love that lives inside of me and so that's what I did for the next hour but before I got to share with them they wanted to know and they wanted to see if I would be able to interact with them in their environment and I did and they got to see that I cared enough to be able to do that instead of avoiding that and so when I got down to sit down at the table guess what they did for me they were open to listening my crazy religious self and because I sat there and like helped basically like stood up for the club the whole time. And so um, it's give and take. That's how relationships work. And so um, that's kind of like, and that was led by the spirit. I told the spirit, I'm like, Holy Spirit, you know, my heart, you know, I don't want to be here. You know, I have no interest in being in a gay club on a Friday night. Like I literally do not have nothing to do here. And, um, but help me, Holy Spirit, help me to show love, help me to show kindness. And a lot of people would be like, oh my God, absolutely not. How dare you? You know, you're from the lifestyle. You can never be there. Oh my gosh, no, this legalism, that legalism, this. It's like we're not in legalism. I'm not, I'm not abiding in laws. I'm not abiding in rules. I'm abiding by the spirit of God who wants people to be saved, who wants people to understand the love of God and the kindness of, of the Lord. And so how am I going to do that? 
however the Holy Spirit leads me to do that. And each situation is different. There's not going to be another Talmud and we don't need to make commentaries and rules upon rules to be able to, in every possible situation, think of like how to handle that situation. No, it's, we're dependent on God and we should want that. No, like we should want to like be taught by the Holy Spirit. We should want to be taught by Jesus and, um, and have Holy Spirit just um, point us our lives to that. So, I mean, that's an example of one time that I did and how I treated my friends and showed them that I cared about them. Um, and even if they were like, another good question is like, oh, are you just friends with people because you just want to introduce them to Jesus? Or are you friends with people because you genuinely want to love people? And it's like, whether they were open to accepting that or not open to accepting that, I'd still be their friends and I would still love on them. And so it's not my job to save people. That's God's job. My job is just to love people and to show them that I care about them. And so, yeah, I don't know. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Yeah, um, and it's it's all about shining the light as well, and and inspiring them to to meet Jesus, and um, and like you said, he he is your identity. So so when you are speaking, he is like being able to speak through you, and and be that testimony and be that witness. And yeah, he gives us he gives us choice. I think that in Christianity, we we get it around our heads that once we become or once we're saved we we have to be perfect all of a sudden and we have to um do all these perfect things and we can't um go into places of sin not saying like you going and like and being sinful but i'm saying like going into places where there is sin going on i mean that's the world anyway wherever you go but you christians can be so captivated about staying in their bubbles staying in their group that they don't then go out and actually do what Yeshua said. And that is go and make disciples, go and minister who I am, minister my gospel. So I think that's really cool. And I want to hear now, like your, your ministry now and how like the, the after effects of, of the, um, the encounter you had with Jesus and, and how that's incorporated, um, into your ministry. I know that you, um, love to worship, you love to lead Bible studies. Um, and now you're public speaking in churches. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, the Lord has really done, he's done a number on me this year. (laughs) Like, uh, he brought me into this amazing ministry. Excuse me, he brought me into this amazing ministry that I did not, I did not know how things were going to turn out. But, you know, now I have social media, people hitting me up like you guys to be on podcasts and stuff. And so I think it's amazing. You know, it's wonderful um, what God is doing. But essentially, um, all of it, I think is like, um, I think it's just to glorify him, you know, just to share my story and to just be truthful and honest. And so um, that experience of just being able to speak and all that stuff, it's wonderful. It's lovely. Sometimes I wish I didn't have to do it. I'll be honest because it is like, like, I don't know. I don't, if you're the type of person that you're like, I want to be in ministry or I want to be like this person, I want to be on stage. I want to be talking and all this stuff. I'm like, Uh, good lord like you know lord have mercy like okay do it um because i've been there and it's not fun like it's it's not Mm -hmm. fun to put yourself just this morning i woke up and i had an huge long paragraph someone had written on my comments just like completely attacking me and it's like to wake up every single day and to get that like it happens every day (laughs) to get a beating every day from people who are supposed to be christians and that are supposed to love you um and just completely you know hurt you want want to like see you hurt is really Mm -hmm. hard and so I don't know why anyone would want to chase that I certainly don't there's so many attacks that not just come from other Christians and from people but also from the demonic and from the principalities that are around us you know in, in the heavens or on the earth and so um it's interesting when you put yourself out there, like you're just like a big target for everyone, your target for the natural and your target for the supernatural. So I don't know why, like, why would you want to be a target? You know? So Mm -hmm. I don't, and I try to run away from it for a long time. Like, I'm like, I could have probably had a really nice, easy Christian life. Like, had I just like not done a testimony video, put it up on YouTube, (laughs) like never like shared or did Bible studies with anybody or like was helping the kingdom in any way. Like just went to church every, every Sunday and Friday had my little community, probably never shared my story, never told anyone about my same sex attractions and, you know, like live this born again life. And it probably would have been so 
easy. Like demons would not come and attack me at 3 a.m. at night. Like there would be no spiritual warfare because I'm not doing anything. Like I'm, and I'm not. Is that like, true faith though? Exactly. You know, it's like, <laughs> but I have to be led by the spirit. I have to be led mm-hmm. what Jesus is calling me to do. So um, it seems really beautiful from the outside, but from the inside, like nobody sees what I go through as an individual. And, um, and that's okay because I go through it with Jesus and he's helping me through that. Like just this past week, I've been having horrible night terrors, like every night at like 3 a.m. in the morning and it's all demonic. And would that be happening to me? I want, it's so funny how like that didn't start happening. And so I just took a huge break in, in July, um, not doing Bible studies, not doing content just like for a whole month. And then when I started doing my Bible studies, guess what's happened? Night terrors at 3 a.m. Because demons, they hate you. And they know that you're working on people's lives. And they know that people are coming to Christ because of you. So, of course, who are they, they going to try to take down? You. Because you're the reason why people are coming to Christ. And so, and God is using you. And so, um, yeah, those things are, are hard. So that's the hard part of it. But the most rewarding part of it is getting to change people's lives and to see the impact in people um people who my ministry has affected and i i mean i i wouldn't i wouldn't want to change that for anything else like that is makes me the happiest because there was no one who helped me when i was growing up there's not like i get a little emotional there is no one who helped me there's no one who uh talked to me about love even even today i'm still so confused because there's preachers and pastors who are still not you know really talking about what the bible says and um, and it's so confusing. Like the other day I was listening to a video about like breaking strongholds and it was like, in order for you to break strongholds, you have to do this. And then you have to do this and you have to do that. And you have to remember this and you have to remember this and, oh, and don't forget about this and make sure people are praying for you over here. And like, it's like, it's like, oh, it's just so much sometimes, you know, it's, it's like, oh Jesus, you know, like we need, we need help. Um, and, and that's how sometimes it can be. And so I try to, um, just in my ministry, just trying to make it really simple, very easy for people um and involve the spirit and allow god to be god and you know try my best to share the truth that's in god's word um in a very easy way to um understand and so and yeah and help people and just love people at the end of the day what does it say it says love covers a multitude of sin and so um if i can love then we can cover a multitude of sin and um and i think a lot of people need love in this life there's so many people that need love so we're gonna um, open up for questions in a minute. Um, we just have one final um, question for you before we do that. Um, so if you have a question, if you're watching on Facebook Live um, and you have a question for Sam, please drop it in the um, chat and we'll ask him. Um, what advice would you like to give to anyone who's listening, who's in the LGBT community or who has friends or family who are? Um, once again, I know it sounds like I talk about love a lot, <laughs> but like God is love. So I love love. <laughs> I love God. Um, but I think one advice is just to be understanding, to really, even if you, you don't, you don't have to understand, um, to love someone. And I think I read that somewhere. Um, it was like a friend, she posted it. It's like, sometimes we won't understand. Like we just, we literally won't get it, but I can still love someone without having to understand that aspect. You know, um, especially me, I deal with that all the time. Like I really want to understand people um, and the problems that they're having and, and relate and have it relate to my life. Um, and sometimes I can't and I don't get it. And then it, it doesn't help me to, to love that individual. Cause I'm just like trying to figure out why they're thinking what they're thinking or how they're thinking what they're thinking right um and so understanding is crucial but even if you can't understand just love on them and just validate them make them feel seen um make them feel heard um i think a lot of people remind people of their value you know people they don't feel like they have value especially in this world that's what the devil wants to take away from us that's what he's been taking away from us um, our authority that Christ originally had given to us, um, remind people of their value, of who they are in Christ, um, and how much God loves them, and, um, and yeah, and I think that's, that's the best advice that I would give them, is just be understanding, if you can't understand, validate, and encourage, um, exhort one another, that's what Hebrews tells, exhort one another daily, um, so that we don't fall into the sin, what's the sin, the apostasy, the falling away from Christ, 
Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's the advice. Just understand one another, love one another, and um, be there for one another. Amen. That's so true. Um, I think we can get so caught up in the technicalities as well of like, you, you need to get them saved. It's like the whole thing of like getting another notch in your belt and stuff. And it's like, it's not, it's not about that at all. And when we realize that I've been really blessed listening to you today. Um, and also just prior to our, um, to this call, I've been, looking at different people. There's two in particular that I feel are doing such great work, um, besides you, of course, um, in sharing their testimonies and, and then inspiring Christians um, to respond in such a, in a more loving way and biblical way um, to those in the LGBT uh, community. And that's uh, Caleb Coltenbach and Beckett Cook. I think they have, Beckett Cook was, um, was living, um, as, as a, as a gay guy and having all these relationships and everything for, I think like 20 years. And he had a radical, um, experience with Jesus and, and turned, um, turned away from, um, from the homosexual lifestyle. And then Caleb was brought up, um, by lesbians and a gay dad. And, um, he then became a pastor and has a church and now he teaches all of this stuff. And so, um, I definitely feel that this is the time where, this it's such an important message to be sharing and it's such an important um topic to to be talking about in church and in in the um, believing community so I'm just thanking God right now for this conversation and for these people who are stepping up to um to inspire others to talk about this in in a better way than it has been um in a more inclusive way where people are feeling more comfortable now to come forward and to um and to learn these things and to and to be encouraged rather than um live in the the trauma and the hurt that so many christians have imposed on them so i just want to say thank you for coming on today. Um, is there a way, like, first of all, if anyone is listening right now, write your questions in um, and we will get to those. But is the, um, and while we wait for those questions, uh, Sam, is there any way for us to follow you, to support you? Um, how can our listeners do that? Um, yeah, I also just want to respond real quick to what you're saying. Um, sometimes it seems like too simple or too good <laughs> to be true, you know? Yeah. But- that's that's God you know same thing that we take by faith is Jesus sacrifice like no I have to work for it I have to do something there there has to be something that I have to do it's like it's too good to be true it is like all I have to do is just believe and have faith like sometimes it's just as simple as all you have to do is just understand someone and just love on them you know we really do complicate it more than it needs to be complicated um like like the word says love covers a multitude of sin it's as simple as that so um, just remembering that is really important. Um, and yeah, where people can find me, I mean, I have my website, samuelabrahamperez.com. I am full-time ministry. Um, nobody pays me. There's no church that supports me. I'm not a missionary from any denomination. Um, I work literally solely on the kindness of like strangers, like strangers and people who follow my ministry. And like, if, if it wasn't for my patrons every single month, I would not be able to do what I do and continue to educate the church, continue to study the Bible with people, continue my own studies and my own journey. So if you like what I do and you want to support me, go to my website, SamuelAbrahamPerez.com. You can do a monthly partnership with me where you can um, give to me and my ministry um, monthly, like donate to us. Um, and that would help me tremendously because we do have a goal <laughs> of every month so that, um, I can continue to do this <laughs> and, uh, and I don't go back to personal training or something like that for money. Um, but I love what I do. I love doing these podcasts and that's why I don't charge to be on the podcast. I do everything for free. Like when people invite me to speak and churches and stuff like that, there's no fee, um, because I can do that thanks to the help of people who support me. And so if you want to do a one-time donation, that's also on my website, samuelabrahamperez.com. You can find all the resources there. Um, but yeah, we definitely need more monthly partners. Um, I'm always asking for that. Um, and that's, I have Venmo, PayPal, all that stuff like on my, on my website. So people can definitely find, and every single link, like my YouTube link, my TikTok. You can follow me on TikTok. I make TikTok is like really crazy. So don't expect crazy content. 
um, Instagram. You can find me on there, Samuel Abraham P. Um, I'm also on Twitch, and that's a Burritos and Jesus. <laughs> as the only one with like a different <laughs> name because it's Twitch. Um, I feel like Twitch is gonna die soon. Like nobody really goes on there anymore. But um, yeah, and, and then my YouTube channel is YouTube.com/slash/Samuel Perez TV. So. Awesome. Well, I've put the links in the comments on Facebook. And for those listening um, on the podcast, that'll be in the description above. We do have one question from Haley Russell. She says, hi, I worked in the theater in London in the 90s, and it was where I was introduced and worked with gay men. They were very camp and stood out. How can... um, Oh, wait, she said, can you uh, tell me, in your opinion, why men who are gay have a very particular different frequency sound in their voice, their voices? It allows me to recognize a gay guy. Um, And then she has a second question, but I can let you answer that one first. Uh, Yeah, um, I don't know. I guess maybe it's uh, something to have to do with admiring females, Um, like uh, gay men. We love females. You know, we think like we, we respect them so much. Um, it's one of the reasons why we don't fall into lust with females. It's because we respect them, you know? Um, and so usually heterosexual men, they don't really respect females very much. And so maybe we articulate that through our actions and through our voice. So when you do see that, just see it as a sign of like, oh, this person really respects females, (laughs) um, (laughs) that they exhibit those kind of things. Um, but you know, who knows? I don't know. It's, it's one of those things that like, I have a particularly high voice. Um, and, but not even like, sometimes I, I guess I was, I was more feminine when I was in the gay world. Um, just cause like, once again, it was like, we never really hung out with heterosexual males. We didn't have that heterosexual male influence. Um, and when it comes to male influence in the gay community is like very small. Like if, if, if you know anything about gay men, they don't really have the best fathers. Um, and so there's that lack of, um, male influence. And so I guess, yeah, that's where it would come from. And then, um, also we just hang out with girls all the time. So if you hang out with something all the time, like you're going to like start sounding like them and acting like them. And, um, and so, yes, that's probably the answer. And her second question is, um, what is the best way as a straight person I can reach someone that is gay for Jesus without putting them off? Um, how to reach someone? Um, I think the best way is uh, prayer mm-hmm. and relationship. Um, uh, prayer on your own and relationship and then prayer with them in person if they're open to it. Like, I love it. Like when gay guys are like, oh yeah, I'm Christian. I'm like, awesome let's pray and then we get to pray together you know and we get to let god be god and so if someone's like yeah i'm christian and i'm gay um be like okay cool do you want to pray let's pray let's read the bible together like let's do this together you know like um no judgments no oh look at this first you see here heterosexuality i mean homosexuality is like a sin like don't do that please don't do that like um just read the bible and you know show it to them see if they have the same respect for the bible and pray if they're open to that um and, and if not, then go and pray on your own time in your own room. If you're not praying for people, then why are you talking to them? You know, like if you're not praying for the people that are around your life and you don't really care about them. And so prayer in private is way more important than open public prayer. And, and then just developing relationship with them, like taking an interest in the things that they have an interest in. And, um, and they will also take an interest in the things that you have an interest in. That's such good advice. Um, Well, I know I've been really blessed today as well by um, this conversation. Um, If we don't have any more questions, Hannah, do we have any more questions? No, okay, we're gonna wrap it up there. Um, Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you so much to Sam. Um, Please go and subscribe to Sam's channels and donate to his channel if you feel led. We'll see you all next time. See you later. Bye.